Spider-Man and Emily here to bring you the brand new episode of Kickboxing for Kids. We're going to get warmed up with a brand new agility ladder activity. We're going to learn how to do quarter hops. So you're going to be facing this way and what Emily's going to do is she's going to jump in. Okay, do that first. That's a sideways jump. Then she's going to jump back. Then she's going to jump over, but notice she's not in the ladder yet. Then she's going to jump forward. That's four hops total. It goes over. Go ahead, back, over, in. Okay, so now, Emily, I'm just gonna say go, you show the quarter hops. Go! Emily's got her heels up, she's landing soft like a cat. Her body isn't flopping all over the place, it's, it's very well controlled. These are some of the things that you wanna try to keep in mind when you exercise on the agility ladder. You got skill to go through it, great, but if you don't go through it clean, well, then you don't have control, and skill's not much without control. So, em, let's do it off the other lead whenever you're ready. Over, back, over, in. One and two, three and four. One, two, three, four is a quarter, two, three, four, and you are done. Well done. Next exercise, grapevine, or what is also called karaoke. She's gonna to try to keep her knees down, and what Emily is going to do is cross over into the next box, Step apart into the next box, cross behind into the next box, and continue out. So it goes in front, apart, behind, apart. She exit out, she goes back. Let's see what you can do. Wonderful. Did I do that? Yes. How dare I? All right, let's go back. Oh, oh that was you. That was a Spider Man. All right, we'll try one more time. Wonderful. About 30 seconds each exercise, and if you have favorites that you like to practice from the previous lessons, put those in too. A good warm up, nice attribute development. Team, in today's lesson, we're going to learn how to do our first series of blocks. There's various different ways to defend yourself, okay? Today, we're going to work on what's called hard style blocking. In the future, we'll show you how to cover, how to dodge, how to duck, things like this. And it's like being a carpenter, you know, a master carpenter can do a lot with a hammer, but it would be nice to have a saw and a screwdriver and, you know, other tools. This is like your hammer tool, okay? And then we'll show you some other tools in the future, give you a full toolbox. Here's how we do it. Go ahead and go to your guardian stance in. What Emily's gonna do is change from her mixed guard into a triangle guard. She's gonna bring in things real snug. And what a triangle guard does is it allows you to respond equally left and right, okay? Because everything is right up in the front. She's gonna tuck her chin down and she's gonna think about being what we call condensed. Her stomach's gonna get tight like when we do our ab exercises and she's looking kind of like a turtle, okay? First block is called an outer block. She's gonna turn her palm forward. She's gonna use what's called the ulna and that's right there is going to be hit as I swing my attack into her. Not her fist. She's got her elbow down, so it's kind of like a, imagine a castle drawbridge, okay? If the bridge is down, the enemy forces can come in. If the drawbridge is up, it's a lot harder for the enemy forces to get in, right? If not impossible. When she does this, she'll take a little step like when she punches and sizzle. Ready? Out. Let's do the other side. Out. 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 Next one's called a parry. A parry is a deflection against a straight attack. It could be someone trying to punch her, but it could also be someone trying to push her. It could be someone trying to grab her, and much scarier, someone trying to choke her. Any of these, before the contact is made, you have a chance of deflecting. You're gonna keep your thumbs close to your fingers and make much like a C or a crescent. So let's go to the front, triangle guard, and let's parry, and parry, parry, and parry, 
Next one is a diamond low block. If someone's trying to hit you low, kick you low, or if it's unwanted touch, you're going to pull your waist back. You're going to do a little step drag with your feet, and we're going to drop our arm. Now, if Emily drops both her arms, can you see the shape of a diamond? That's why we call it a diamond low. She's actually doing a half diamond. Right here, she looks like she's flexing her muscles, right? So she keeps one hand up, the other hand drops down. Okay, let's bring ourselves forward and other side. Diamond, back up. Good, okay, so that's your basic structure. Face me, kiddo. Triangle guard. So if we just go in order, I might swing, touch block with the outer. I might reach, touch block with the pair. And I'll reach, get some space from my hand, you see that? and the other side. Good, very, very nice, high five. You don't wanna follow the attacks like you're following a fly, okay? You're gonna to look towards the center of your attacker's mass, which is usually right in this area below their throat, okay, where their collarbone is, and you're gonna use peripheral vision, which is what you can see in the corner of your eye. Look straight ahead. Can you tell that I'm over here? Yeah. Yeah, but she's not looking at me, right? She sees it in the corner of her eye. That is what we're going to advise. Now, I remember when I was a kid, I heard adults say, if you're confronted, you gotta look somebody in the eye. And, and there's, there's some truth to that because it can project self-confidence. Once it's gone past the point of somebody intimidating you or threatening you and you actually have to defend yourself, it's better to use what works. The eyes can be deceiving and somebody that experiences conflict a lot will show no fear in the eyes either. So what you wanna do is look center of their mass and use the peripheral to see all these different lines. It'll help you maintain a focused calm and you'll have a higher likelihood of protecting yourself. She's gonna look here on Spider-Man, right at my spider symbol. Nice. And time. Now, that's pretty good, and because I think she only missed like maybe two or three, right? And I'm not letting her counter back, and I'm not letting her move. I mean, I'm just trying to get her to a point where she's training quick reflexes. It's a good drill to do. Soft touch, though, because ah, it can start to smart after a while. Hands up, guard up. So, give me a one. Us, two. Us, three. specific for kickboxing or Muay Thai. If you are in a real life situation, you might just do good to step out of the way of someone's kick. Like so, if I went to kick Emily and she just steps out of the way, I might just slip and fall and completely miss. Or if I don't fall, I'll be taken by surprise. So that might be the ideal thing to do. As chances are, someone who can kick well, like they're a good martial artist, isn't gonna be out there bullying. Otherwise, uh, they're not a very good martial artist. You know what I mean? Let's pick up our left leg and we're gonna push with our right. Back down, let's do the other side. And down, left, and right. The push can actually be done to somebody to help stagger them, like so. If I kick at Emily here and she pushes me, I'm already on one leg, so she blocks and counter shoves. You can turn that into a fist. Do your leg check, punch this. Boom! A little bit more severe of a counter, but something that you can do. For today's training, we're just gonna push. You notice I got my shin guards on, so we're not gonna be banging up too bad on our shin bones. Hands up high, give me a two. Us, us, knee, elbow, round kick, push kick. Yes, yes, one. Next piece, if 
somebody were to try to grab your legs, to pick you up, slam you down, something like that, we're gonna learn what's called a sprawl. First of all, hands up, Ed. If I'm trying to get her, what she has to do is not be there. So if I drop low, common things for people to do is to stand still and either go uh, out of surprise and rise up or go uh, out of surprise and get low. If that happens and I'm able to make contact, I can hoist her. And then once I got her up, I can spider slam her down. So that right there, obviously you're not round kicking anymore, right? So we'd have to stop that from happening. So what Emily's going to do is create space or what we call a void. She's gonna get contact here on my shoulder. As I get low and that's the tell, my level drops. She's gonna get ready to jump back and hopefully create space. If I happen to still be up, she's gonna throw a knee just like so. Again, slow, in and hit. Now, Emma, I'm gonna really try to get you and I want you to sprawl until I'm not trying to get you anymore, okay? And time. Outstanding, girl, give me five. Now, if they do get a hold of you, we don't wanna lift our knee. That's gonna be too dangerous, you probably end up falling down. What we're gonna do is use an elbow strike that's different than the one we learned. It's called a spike. Straight down is a spike. So slow, if I try to get her, maybe I grab her, give me that leg. I grab her. She doesn't want a knee, because if I pull this leg, she's gonna have the rug pulled out from under her. So instead, she's gonna elbow to my back. Either arm, bingo. Did you notice how she used her hand to save me? I really appreciate that, kiddo. Again, good partner. We take care of each other. I get low and elbow. Awesome. What if you fall? Well, what Emily's going to do if she falls is sit, roll, and hit the ground. And what she's gonna do is make the shape of the letter V. Her palms sit to help disperse some of the impact from her back. She's gonna keep her chin tight to her neck so her head doesn't whip into the ground. Come on up just a step. So slow, start your sprawl. It goes wrong and you fall, okay? Show them how to sit and hit the ground. Now, once she's down, she's got a leg ready. You wanna know why? Because if I'm like, I got you now, now go slow, she can kick. Oh! Any good target. Oh! Things like this. I did this to the Green Goblin once. Oh, that's an awesome kick. After she kicks twice, that's what we'll do for training. This is how we do our get. Face the front. I'll match it. Okay, so. What we're going to do is we're going to bend our left leg, put our hands to the right. That leg that's in front, well, we're going to push up and pull up behind us. Go ahead. We call this getting up to base. Let's come back down. Hands and foot. Notice that it's opposite. Yeah, and we get up and we're set. That's getting up to base. Now, if Emily were to be taken off her feet, and she falls, first thing she has to do is have some self-preservation. If I'm coming to get her, she's ready. She's gonna kick once, she's gonna kick twice, I back off, she's gonna get up to base, and then if she needed to throw something, she can She can be set to go. The cool thing about getting up to base is you create distance, right? And fall down. Go ahead and kick twice. One, two, now take your time. Look how close I am. As she pulls her leg back, she's creating space, getting to her stance, and if I'm trying to get her, boom. She's got it. Good job. Because once you can hit, that's cool, but once you can stop from getting hit, that's everything. Just follow my lead. Give me a two. Elbow. Us. Us. Three. Kick. Push kick. Round kick. Cross. Let's move our feet. Hands are high, eyes are on me. Watch Us. I still like that. Crawl and give me a knee. Cross punch. Round kick. You got me going back. Cross punch. Good girl. Move this. Hands are high. Sprawl to elbow. Give me a knee. Switch knee. Elbow. Elbow. Combo two. Round kick. Sprawl and fall, Emily. Here we go. One. Two, get yourself up. I'm coming in the crowd, you. Atta girl, good job. Give me five. So everybody, for fitness today, we're gonna be working with a medicine ball. Moms and dads, play it again sports or the internet. Get your kid a medicine ball. It's a great versatile tool, a good way to get them into weightlifting and using good core control with that weightlifting. What Emily's gonna do again is three exercises, the recommended duration, 30 seconds each, the recommended quantity, 
three sets. She's gonna start with rolling push-ups, okay? Step out the way for a moment. So when you do your rolling push-ups, you put one hand on the medicine ball, one hand on the floor, so you're offset, and then you balance as you go through the push-up. You roll it with control, it doesn't have to be fast. Get balanced, do a second push-up. Emily, can you demonstrate? Yes, sir. Let's see if you can do four, two up of each side. One push-up, roll. Two. Three. Four. Time. Very good. Next exercise is the Russian twist. So what Emily's going to do is have a seat. She's going to try to lift her feet and hold them and not fall. Take the medicine ball and she's going to try to roll. Right, left, right, left. Just like this. If you have trouble with this, you can put your heels down, but here's what I want you to try. Don't put your heels down and sit up straight. Put your heels down and then lean back until you feel your tummy get tight. And now your abs and your core are working. And then you can do the twist from here. And let's see if you can do six Russian twists. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Good. Let's jump up. Last one, squat and throw. Helps to develop explosive speed or fast twitch muscle responders that is great for kickboxing and other athletics as well. What Emily's gonna do is hold the medicine ball under her chin and she's gonna do her squat. And when she comes up from the squat, she's gonna throw it as high as she can. When she catches it, she squats again, just like so. Okay, Em, let's see if you can do five, because it's good to do five with anything. One, two, three, four, and it's great for the quality of timing as well. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.